And that's good, because it's good to be bad. So, guys, tell me a little bit about uh, Acquisitions Incorporated. Oh, man. Where Before you, we get into D&D. &D. Well, like 10 years, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> so 10 years ago, um, we wanted to do, we wanted to work with wizards on something. We were like, well, why don't we do a podcast where people learn how to play D&D, &D, but you have a range of people. Like, you have somebody who's still playing, like, yeah. actively playing. This is when 4E first came out. It's like, and here's somebody who is, like, a lapsed player, and here's somebody who's never played before. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, we thought it was really fun, but, you know, eventually that became a big part of what people liked about the content that we make. And that's, like, 10 years ago. Yeah, so that's I mean, like before anyone even did live streams in general. No, no, no. We didn't even know, like, we didn't actually know what we had done. Yeah. Right? It took a long time to figure it out. And then as soon as we figured it out, we tried to take it as seriously as we possibly could. And so that's what the C team is about. The C team is basically, yeah, so Acquisitions Incorporated is really a live show okay. that takes place at um, the PAX events. Right. And, right, and the last PAX I went to, you, it was like 3,000 people or no, something. No, it's, it, yeah, people, Sold out. people have to go have away. have to turn them away, yeah. People have to leave, yeah, yeah. So I've never been able to see a live action. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know a guy, I can work it out. But, but, but basically that's how it works, is that we were like, well, there's another way to do this show. And then we were like, well, let's think about Acquisitions Incorporated, like not as a specific group of characters, but think about it like as an organization, as yeah. a corporation. And then what would it look like if you were founding a franchise? And so we, we cast around for uh, a crew of, a stalwart crew um, that could come in and sort of define that next part of the story. And that's three of us, you know, three of the players were down there today. Yeah. And uh, you guys stream 3.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on twitch.tv slash hyperrpg. That's right. We do work with hyperrpg on that. So it has some of their... Um, integration. Yeah, it has some of their cool like bit integration and stuff like that. But you can also come on, and then we have special questions. So the, the group there, the people who are watching... Uh, are sort of named in the context of the show. That's the Shadow Council. And so they can make decisions that cause players to succeed and fail. That's so awesome. But, 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 but I also throw out votes to them on story stuff. So this, oh. this whole arc right now is investigating uh, Walnut's uh, history. Um, and the history of her grave, uh, not her grave, her grove. Well, I guess her grove is technically a grave now. Um, Someone's buried in it. It happens, yeah. A grove um, grave. Yeah, well, as you will. And, and so the way, that it, the way that it sort of broke out with that is that, um, you know, how do we go in there? How do we investigate it? But even things like the names of gods are up to the channel. And so I, I try to put out a question early on so that it's something I can work into the game itself. Has it ever, like bit you in the ass? Has like, have no. you ever had a question in chat was just like, what god do we have to fight? And you're like, the god of kittens or something no, like no. that. Listen, I, honestly, the reality is that, is that that audience really has, they'll sort of go where we go. That's, okay, so that's not totally true. It depends on what you mean by bite them in the ass. Yeah. The, the vampires versus LARPers thing oh, did well, not go great for us. Well, no, yeah, yeah. And so th there's a situation where the, the team, so as I said, it's a corporation, yeah. right? And so they take jobs. They get jobs from like a head office <laughs> and they take a cut, right? So all that stuff is a part of the, the hook. Right. And in this particular case, they had made uh, a choice to take on a group of uh, vampires to do security. And it seemed like it was a vampire thing, but the choice I gave the channel was that are these, is this actually like a vampire coven or are these actually like LARPers who are just way into it? And so the channel... So Guess the, what the channel decided. Yeah. So the channel, the, the channel sort of forked it that way. But if it had gone the other way, the way that it worked was that they basically had to like pretend to be running the inn for a little while while the police came and checked everything out. Um, the other way, it would have it been a much tougher fight, yeah. and they would have had a different relationship with another faction in the game. Well, that's the cool right? thing with Dungeons and Dragons. It's not all combat, right? A lot of it's role playing and, and in creative game, problem solving. In our game, the lion's share of it is is role playing. Yeah. I would say, uh, like there was a situation, uh, not in the very last game, but the game before, where something that I thought wouldn't even really rise to the surface, something I thought would sort of like simmer underneath. They basically RP'd it for an hour and a half. I mean, I don't know about you, but like, I, I grew up playing second edition. Even recently, I played oh, a second yeah. edition campaign, totally. which was all rules, all combat. And as we see Dungeons and Dragons being more towards the public, it definitely seems more role play and more creative problem solving. Do you like fifth edition more than the previous edition? I'm guessing you've been playing for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like, I mean, I, I had my start, I played the very first time when I was six, but uh, most of the games 
that I played, like a lot of the real hours that I played as a younger person were just like you. They were all in second. Right. And this definitely, I mean, the reality is that modern D&D &D still has all the tables. Mm -hmm. It still has all the crunch. I think what's different is that people are just using it in a different way. True. I, th I, think, that, I think that that's what we as players and Dungeon Masters, we're using it as a framework, mm -hmm. right? Like if you listen to the Adventure Zone, let's say, okay. dice are rolled on occasion. Yeah. But that's not really what that campaign is about at all. Yeah, it's different, right? I think, when you're running a, sort of an entertainment property, too. Like, it's less, it's less exciting to hear people do math for an hour and a half. Yeah. So it's much more exciting to hear them play pretend and, and to kind of inhabit their characters, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, some, yeah. some opinions differ on it's this. The, it's the fo yeah, it's, the, it's just a matter of focus, really. There is a part of me that, like, because I'm just recently actually starting up with Miss Clicks, a fifth edition game. And I, oh, yeah, yeah. There's parts of me that I kind of wish it was a bit more technical. But then I remember to, like, throw a grappling hook in second edition, you had to roll for strength, roll to connect, roll every five feet to see if you can climb it up. Like, right. maybe I don't miss everything. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. But I mean, but you know, you can take those mechanics as seriously as seriously as you it's want. Up to the DM. Exactly. Or they can, or they can just sort of be set dressing for big moments. You know what I mean? Ooh, what's next for Acquisitions Incorporated? Do you guys have anything really big planned coming up Gosh. that you yeah. can do say? We do? Well, do we? Yeah, we have a lot. Do I mean, we? we have different partnerships and different ways to get. Acquisitions Incorporated and some of the ideas behind AI um, uh, into video games and board games. There's a wow. bunch of there's a bunch of outstanding um, stuff. It's uh, it's outstanding not only insofar as it's great, <laughs> but it's also outstanding insofar as it hasn't occurred yet or is in process. Okay, cool. Um, but but yeah, for right now, it's it's basically um, C Team. Uh, the next really big uh, AI event is probably the live game um, at Benaroya Hall. Uh, at PAX West. Yeah, I was about to say, PAX West is coming up in two months, September? Yeah, right at the beginning of September, yeah. All right, great. Okay, well, you know, I actually want to ask you guys a little bit of just Dungeons and Dragons questions. Kate, how Fire long away. have you been playing? Um, I've played for like three or four years off and on. I started with fourth edition, so I'm not I'm not nearly as like as old school as you guys are. So oh, man, it must have been a really big change going from the sort of grid heavy, yeah. like where everything was like really explicit. Oh yeah, we had, I had the most incredible dungeon master, this guy named Matt, who would build us, we oh. did not deserve him by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry, Matt, I'm so sorry for everything. Um, but he would build out these incredible sets, he'd have dry ice so we'd have fog, he would turn what? off the lights and like light candles so I we had that. fires. Yeah. We, uh, yeah, we dim yeah. the lights and we'll put on midnight syndicate yes. if you don't know who they are. My yes, perfect. My of course, friend, of my course. Friend, my friend Mike is this type of dungeon master. Yeah. So oh, my, my friend Mike is this type of dungeon master. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Like, no, my, my, no I, I hope that my, my, my body language really did communicate. <laughs> that you're not very... You don't that's, that's not... Theater of the mind. Theater of the mind, I vastly prefer, though. Because he would take mind. all this time. It would take 25 minutes to set up this, like, beautiful thing that he, like, cast and poured himself and painted and, like, all the moss and everything. And oh. we were like, wow, this is amazing. We're just going to, like, fart our way through this. <laughs> like, <laughs> real jackass. moss. Yeah, he right. would. Like, I'd say cultivate it and place it. And we were just like, yeah, we kill the, the, the fish. And he, he created this incredible mini for this monster. And we're like, it's a fish pig. And he was like, it's not a fish pig. We're like, it's a fish pig. And it's a very, it's a cool toy. We, we it's a not. very... You He's a high priest. Did he ever not get mad him. at you guys and like punish you yeah. through divine right because absolutely, he's the DM? absolutely, yeah. but oh, very yeah. minimally. He was okay. mostly he was very very tolerant. He very loves forgiving. D and D so much. We like we there was it's the good um, to have that dude. Was it the Dwarven Forge? There was a Kickstarter oh, yeah. where they they like they did a huge set of minis and, and totally. like pieces. We bought it for him. Like we kickstarted out the big package for him because we were like, you love this so much, and we are such assholes. We're That's a good this. set, yeah. though. It was a good That's set, and it's gonna pay dividends. Oh yeah, absolutely. Dude, course. I mean, a good DM like totally changes the game, right? Absolutely. And yeah. and I. My father DMs and has DM for me for my oh, entire cool. life. Yeah, that, my uh, parents met playing Dungeons and Dragons. Shut so up. Oh, that's started, that's hot. That's five so years cool. old was the first time that I started playing, oh, and my father at that time was far more strict, and I, I picked a oh, wizard. Oh, well, the game was more strict too. Totally. Yeah, yeah, back in the early '90s, right? And I picked a wizard, and my mother was being attacked by an orc, and I jumped in front of it, level one, and died. Oh. And my father was like, "Well, yeah, you're dead. Like that. Like you you go into the negatives. Like." You're, you start bleeding, and my mom starts freaking out, like yelling at him, because my dad is essentially just killed his five-year-old daughter. Holy shit, that's too real. Your daughter's first level one character. She that's like that's upset. in the rule book. I didn't kill my daughter's first level character. <laughs> no. no, no, we we just started playing at home. Uh -huh. So my my uh, my daughter Ronya, who already sounds like a D and D character. Ronya. Um, no, no, she has it's Crystal Leaf of Edinburgh. She's like this uh, hard-ass paladin lady. She said she wanted to be a knight lady, and I'm like, I can hook that up. Paladin, man. I know exactly how it Righteousness. works. Righteousness. Mm -hmm. No, she's, she's killing it. 
How do you how do you like incorporating your family into Dungeons and Dragons? Oh, it's a blast. It's a blast. My son Elliot also gets into it, and then it was actually my wife Brenna's idea. Wait, wait, it's Astrid. Astrid Hairs Hollow is her like rogue. Oh, oh no, she's Hairs Hollow. She's a baller. Yeah, she just huh. she knows Brenna is a baller. That's pretty sweet. All right, have you guys ever had like terrible deaths in Dungeons and Dragons? Never died. Immortal. No. Okay. Cool. Some people play the omnipotent, no, but as, as a five-year-old being killed literally within my first game yeah, by yeah, my father, yeah. I understand that sometimes death is just inevitable. But here, but also, but he set you up for a life of epic quests and adventure. And he was also a great DM. He used to make word searches and dungeons, oh, and cool you would puzzles. have to step on a, if you stepped on something that spelled a goblin or orc, they would be summoned. So ah. you would have to walk around this grid maze to go through it, right? Hey, Sorry, I like bragging about my dad. Can we bring your dad to Baller. DM? They still DM. The they Mike. play with the same couple for the last 30 years. My, my DM doesn't do stuff like that, so. It's this guy. Maybe you should step. Do you, what's the weirdest thing you've done as a DM that you make your players, like, do? Oh, man. Uh, some, I've made players hold hands. Okay. Well, like, my last DM, if you rolled a nat 20 and it was a critical strike, you had to describe it for it to oh, actually happen. Oh, yeah. yeah. I yeah. make him do that all the that. time. Yeah, yeah. I don't okay. even care yeah. about the roll. Yeah. 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 You have to, that's the rule, is, like, if it's sufficiently rad. Sufficiently yeah, exactly. rad, and, exactly. and it, so we have to make it If it's it cool enough. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. All right. No, I put him to work. Well, what do you uh, what do you want to see on your upcoming campaigns? Do you do you want to see, especially with the Tomb of Annihilation? Are you guys gonna incorporate oh, yeah. that into the oh, C team? Oh no, definitely, definitely. Like like, like I say, this is a, this was like a one shot, uh, you know, fair fun food. Yeah. Uh, you know, right outside of town where they operate. But for us, um, as an ongoing thing, some of the concepts, especially around death and resurrection, are so alien to. D and D as a fantasy, well, just as a fantasy setting, like resurrection is a norm mm -hmm. in D and D. It's a spell. Like mm -hmm. my character um, in the main campaign, Omen Drawn, he can raise dead. I mean, you know what I mean? Like it's a normal thing. It's in your character progression. Yeah. And so when you take that if you're away, high enough level. exactly, exactly. But when you take that away, you know, how does that affect like the stability of these? That's true. Of these societies. And actually, what we're going to be looking at is meat grinder mode. I don't know if you guys got to hear about meat grinder mode. Uh, no, Chris. So I'm, I know Chris Perkins okay. fairly well, and he has brought I it up. I know Chris Perkins. Well, yes. I, I do. I actually know him. I've been I playing with him for like 10 friends. years. <laughs> he is, he's my dad. Oh, no, whoa. that's not true. But but no, no, he, he had... Did he, had, he kill you at age five <laughs> as well? <laughs> no, it's the same arc. Uh, no, no, uh, he, had, he had gone into some of that, some of those concepts really quick. But honestly, the fact of the matter is, is that I'm going to be learning things about it here at the at the stream of annihilation too. Yeah. So I mean I think we all are. And it's just so cool to see so many different groups and especially people like you guys, the old guards that have yeah, essentially yeah. like brought up popular tabletop gaming to the masses. It's really weird, right? It's that like because like, be a lot of people it's like a lot the way that a lot of people have gotten into D and D, you know, isn't necessarily through that like neighborhood vector or like the you know like their weird uncle, right. which is what happened with me, right? Yeah. I mean that's the, I'm not saying that's a bad way to do it, but I'm saying that the way that people the way that people get into it now is you know through uh, acquisitions incorporated or mm -hmm. through Critical Role, like with Matt Mercer's work. Mm -hmm. That's that's the norm now. It is right. And that's and that's that's the on ramp. It shows you the stigma of what you thought Dungeons and Dragons was of like you know a bunch of like kind of antisocial people hanging out in, in a dark room, and it shows that it can be bright and fun and with full of amazing people. Well, yeah, and I, I think that, I think emphasizing the the comedy and the interpersonal stuff is really sort of the hallmark of what we try to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it, we try to make it a social thing. Yeah, my, my some of my favorite reactions from being on the C team has seen people. I've, I've seen people say things like, "I went out and bought the starter set because of C team." Like, that is and great. now I'm running my own game because mm -hmm. of C team. That is so. Oh, cool. Yeah, just show them another way to play. I mean, that's sort of been the theme of the conversation in general, right? Just this, there's, these are the systems, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of ways. There's a lot of ways to use those systems to tell stories with your friends. Right. Right. Oh, I'm excited, man. Mm -hmm. And and so you said you know uh, Chris Perkins. I do. I think. Oh, I think he's, he's down there right oh, now. No, he's getting wound up right now. Where is he? Oh, Chris. He's surrounded by now. beasts. Chris, are you ready to go? Uh, yes. I think. Are you, are you ready to I'm kill ready. some people? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, he's got that bloodlust. Are you are you a, a little sad that you're not down there in the the meat grinder? Oh, I get I get plenty of time with Chris. Okay. Because okay. we're best friends. Can you give me like a ten second description of the meat grinder? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Look it up. What I was told essentially is that it's well, uh, the description I made for it. It's like going into a video game, having normal setting, and then turning it on hard. Oh. Like it's just everything's high, like higher level. It's easier to die. It's just 
a, like super hard mode. So the next segment is going to be how fast these fools die. I think so. I think how fast Chris Perkins can kill people nice. is, is the theme well, of the. I know nice. perfectly well, actually, <laughs> even in regular rules. Yeah. How many how many people do you think is going to die? He's here? a pro. Uh, there's he is going to be the only one that lives. As a DM. I yeah, gar no, I guarantee th these people are just food. He's gonna hold on by the skin. He's already he's already licking his chops. <laughs> All right, man. Oh, dude, uh, Jerry, Kate, is there anything you want to say to the audience or to your fans for C Team before we send it off? Oh, oh yeah. Thank you very much for coming and hanging out. Which one is it? Oh, they're right there. Hi, what's up? <laughs> Thank you very much for coming and hanging out with the C Team. Uh, we rock it at 3:30 PDT every Thurs. Kate, Rosie, uh, Walnuts, Dinar, Catris, much love.